I'm not usually a big conspiracy theory guy, especially regarding Titanic. There are so many conspiracy theories regarding this ship and these basically crazy ideas that contributed to the ship sinking. The most prevalent one, uh, at least in this day and age, is the coal fire theory. I've also seen many theories of, uh, you know, it was sunk by a German U-boat. The switch theory, which basically states that Olympic is at the bottom of the ocean instead of Titanic. You know, it was an, it was an insurance scam, and it was all it was intended to sink. And Captain Smith was basically bought off by J.P. Morgan, and all these crazy sensationalist ideas. But in this video, I'm going to discuss something that I basically stumbled upon that I think is pretty interesting and fun, to say the least. So I have a video on the BCM Atlantic, uh, and I'll put the link in the description so you can watch it if you'd like. But just quickly, it was a Canadian shrimping vessel that sank in 2000 after striking a growler or a small iceberg while it was fishing in the North Atlantic Ocean. And you might be wondering what this has to do with Titanic, but just hear me out, just trust me. There's a lot of eerie similarities between these two shipwrecks that uh, I will review in this video. So, diving right in, the Titanic sank in an area that is now well within the controlled patrol area of the International Ice Patrol. The BCM Atlantic sank basically directly north of Titanic by about 800 miles, which really isn't that far apart. Also in the International Ice Patrol's control area. Both of these ships struck sea ice very late at night, 11.40 p.m. for the Titanic and about 3.30 a.m. for the BCM Atlantic. Both of which had crews that basically said it was sort of a glancing blow and they felt some bumps slash vibration. And then they had to send men below basically to inspect the damage because they didn't really think it was uh, anything significant until they actually saw what was going on below the waterline. Both ships were seen to be flooding in multiple locations, including their cargo holds. Both of these ships had commanders with significant experience operating in the North Atlantic. Captain Smith had basically spent his entire life uh, at sea, and he was Commodore of the White Star Fleet. He was also 62 years old. So he's uh, been at it a long time. The commander of the BCM Atlantic had been with this, that same ship for 18 years and spent about 300 days a year fishing in ice water conditions. So they definitely were both well versed with sea ice. And they both knew that in the area that they were operating, there was sea ice based on warnings and information received from other ships. The crews of both ships basically stated that they had conversations amongst themselves discussing uh, the possibility of sea ice and to look out for it. In both cases, within about 20 to 30 minutes, the commanders were preparing to abandon ship, and both ships took a few hours to fully sink, and by the time everyone was rescued in both situations, uh, it was daylight. In both these incidents, some people were unfortunately forced into the freezing cold North Atlantic as well. Now it gets pretty creepy. So, the owner of the BCM Atlantic was Mersey Seafoods. The British government's inquiry into the Titanic disaster was named the Mersey Inquiry. Same exact spelling in both situations. The BCM Atlantic's port of registry was Liverpool, Nova Scotia. The Titanic's port of registry was Liverpool, England. Again, exact same spelling. White Star Line was headquartered in Liverpool, England. John Bigham, a.k.a. Lord Mersey, the man who commissioned the Mersey Inquiry, was born in Liverpool. He retired as president of the Divorce, Probate, and Admiralty Court on March 18, 1910. He would come out of retirement two years later to head up the Mersey Inquiry into the Titanic disaster. The BCM Atlantic sank on March 18, 2000, exactly 90 years to the day that Lord Mersey began his retirement. 
the RMS Carpathia, which was owned by the Cunard, had to travel and traverse through this ice field to reach Titanic's survivors the morning after the ship sank, and it was quite dangerous. The ship that rescued the survivors of the BCM Atlantic was the Fame, and it also had to travel through very dangerous icy waters to reach the survivors. In both cases, it took these rescue ships about three and a half hours to arrive. Ironically, both ships involved with the rescuing of these doomed vessels also met untimely fates not long after these incidents. The fame sank the following year after a catastrophic refrigeration failure, and the Carpathia was torpedoed during World War I, so both these ships, the rescue ships, also were lost not long afterwards. The Titanic sank on April 15th, the BCM Atlantic sank on March 18th, and the Fame sank on April 19th. All of these days are within a four-week period. Coincidentally, there was a boat drill scheduled for the morning that the Titanic struck the iceberg, but it was reportedly canceled by Captain Smith. Uh, I'm not sure if it really would have made a difference in the lifeboat launching process of Titanic, but the abandonment of ship of Titanic was an absolute disaster. And the bottom line is, the crew of the Titanic could have easily put in another 500 or so people into these lifeboats. And they didn't for multiple, multiple, multiple reasons that I can't get into right now. But the bottom line is the process was a disaster. Ironically, before the very trip that the BCM Atlantic sank on, the crew had to perform two lifeboat drills in order to go to sea. And they attributed these lifeboat drills to their smooth abandonment of ship. So, was there some sort of greater power that somehow relates these ships? I guess we'll never know. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching.